Now, I want to talk about this really beautiful leather journal from Nomad. And I'm, thank you for sending it to me. And I'm really excited to show you um, everything that, about this. It's beautiful, it's handmade, everything is ethically sourced. It is absolutely so well made. And it's like having this kind of vintage, like this little treasure. I feel like this is something Leonardo da Vinci would have drawn in. Um, my imagination goes crazy. So just the way it is bound and made and how it feels in my hand. And it's very thick and there's these beautiful kind of vintage antiqued pages with the deckled edge. So um, I'm gonna show you what I did in it. I know there's gonna be a lot more that I do in it. I have some more ideas of, I'm just gonna, um, kind of keep working in it because I think it'll be a beautiful piece to have as time goes on. So this is one of the journals. There I think are four or five different styles. There's ones with um, pieces hanging. They're just really beautiful. And you can see the stitching, the leather stitching on the side. And I really like when journals and sketchbooks have something to kind of bind, keep them closed. So if I want to put, you know, pieces inside. All right, let me move this over and I'll show you what I did. So it's attached here in the back with this little knot. And the pages are so beautiful. You can kind of see the weave in, I think they're cotton, it's cotton paper. Um, and I love the deckled edge. So the first thing I did is I wanted to see how it would take ink. So I used my ruling pen and some speedball ink and I just wrote on here and it did not bleed through. It's really beautiful paper. All right, so then I wanna show you this. So you can see that there are these signatures and each one is, you know, has this little leather from the leather binding, which I really like the individual signatures. So it has a nice feel and the paper feels really nice. So the next thing I did was I, I did a little charcoal sketch. This is from one of the drawings from my class. And I just used some nitrum charcoal, some vine charcoal and a char soft charcoal pencil. And I did not treat the paper. Um, I did erase on it and it was fine. So it's easy to erase on and, you know, it just does, it grabs the charcoal. I can get a lot of depth. I love this, the color of it, it's like, you know, vintage paper. So it's really, it feels really good to draw on. And then I went through and just added a little bit of pastel to it. And then I sprayed this with my final fixative, the um, Sennelier for pastels. But I still um, want to keep, this is a little piece of tracing paper, because when you have a journal and you do charcoal or pastel, even though you spray it a couple of times, when you have it closed and you're traveling around with it or moving around, the pages are going to rub. So I want to try and keep that from happening. Then I did this little study. Um, it is, let me show you the, we were talking about master artists and studying them. And I did, had this pastel and charcoal drawing that's from Degas and it was a study that he did. This is the girl's body bending over. And you can see how he um, kept moving along with the pain. He kept searching until he found exactly what he wanted. So I kind of wanted to focus on this study because I really liked the um, pastel on there. The background is um, a cooler tone, but I kind of worked on that because I wanted to see how the building up more pastel would be and it, it worked really well. So I just kind of built up some layers of charcoal and added my pastel and added some marks. You can kind of see your bodice here. And it's in this page, I did put a thin, very thin coat of clear gesso because I wanted to add the pastel a little bit more and get a little deeper into the paper with the charcoal. So I really like how that blue and gray looks on there. 
All right, and then I did another little Degas study. This was just a quick sketch. I added um, a little bit, I did a quick, um, I think it was a roller or something that was some white gesso. And so then it got me thinking, I wanted to do another study and I really love the work of Egon Sheila. And so I had done it in this little watercolor sketchbook. But I like to study it sometimes, just kind of see how they approach, um, different artists approach um, the, the figure and the face. And Egon Schiele um, was a protege of Gustav Klimt. And it was right at that, um, that turning point of expressionism. And I love um, how raw his drawings and paintings are. So I, did this and then I did another one and I thought what we would do for the demo today is just kind of add some um, a little bit of watercolor maybe a little pastel and show you it now I did put because I'm using water on this I did put um, a little clear gesso on it and I what I like about this is I want to keep things kind of loose in this um, sketchbook and I think I might Kind of lean towards doing more um, um, master art studies, just a place where I can study different artists and their sketching and their lines. And that's, this is a terrible copy, I'm sorry. Um, but I really like to pay attention to the line work and kind of see how they capture. Um, and like the proportions are very, you know, elongated and her face, the structure of her face is very, um, expressive and so I wanted to try and study that and capture it and and um, try to keep it loose so I did not do a lot of erasing on this and I wanted to just kind of see where it would lead me so um, I have a little bit of let's see what do I have here Let me make sure I can get this in I have a little bit of speedball ink here and then I have some watercolor and I think I'm going to use this Van Dyke Brown. And oh, when I did do, when I erased, I used a kneaded eraser and I used my little pencil eraser, but I tried not to erase too much. Okay, so I am going to just kind of demonstrate putting, so we can see how it looks with just some water and ink. And so I'm going to just put a little bit of water down first around her face. Kind of look at this kind of loose, it probably was an inky a sketch with ink, I bet. I don't know. I didn't look very far into the details of this. So now I have a little bit of Van Dyke Brown here. And I'm just going to kind of move it around. And just make a loose, and I like this gold tone of this paper. I think it's going to look really pretty. And this is a good way when you're, um, I have, I had a lot of, you know, questions about, you know, style development. And I think sometimes when you study different artists and kind of look at how they are, you know, creating their lines and um, working out their their paintings because they don't go, they most of them do many studies before they actually commit to the final painting so it goes through a lot of different changes and what I like about this is I can kind of see how he treated the hair and her curls and gave it volume and depth okay so now I'm going to go into my speedball ink just a little bit kind of put it down here kind of follow where the, the darks are. It seems to be spreading nicely. It's really pretty how it's kind of spreading into the paper. So I'm just keeping it very light. Um, I don't know if I would add, you know, a lot of heavy, um, paint, but I'm going to try doing a little, um, 
oil piece in here too. So I'll share that with you. I was going to do one of my little oil paintings, like a little abstract, which I thought would be kind of fun. All right. There's this little skirt down here. That's what it appears to be. So I'm going to I move around her and then add some more. You can see all this. Hopefully I'm straight. It will drive me crazy when I go to edit and it's not straight. <laughs> that happens sometimes. So this side I didn't put any um, gesso on. It was just this side here, the right side. But when you're having one of those, um, I don't know what to draw day, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, this, the drawing took me probably 30 minutes. So I, I put about 30 minutes into it, just trying to keep it loose and not overworking it. And then um, now, you know, I'm kind of playing around with adding this. And it's something you can come back to. Okay, I'm just a little bit of this black in there to darken it. And then her hair has, oh, this seems like a little bit of a, a reddish tint. So I have this burnt sienna. So I think I'm just going to put a little bit in here just to give it. I like how he built the curls, the volume with the darks and the lights here. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to do is I have um, a Stabilo, which is, you know, very water, it's water soluble and it's going to move things around. So I'm just going to go through and I'm holding it back and I'm just going to pull it through the wet and kind of find the curls. And I'm not trying to make it exactly, you know, like his work because I could never do that. But I think that just kind of loosely studying you know, how he has the hair um, falling and draping over her shoulder and the way he was searching here. Like there's this really pretty um, wash of color here. I don't know if I can get it. I might have to use a tinier brush. And I don't really know what he used, but... And then I like these folds in her skirt. Yeah, I could pull out some of the highlights a little bit. And okay, so now I'm gonna, um, let me see if I can pull it down just a little closer. Okay. And I wanna talk about her, her eyes and how he, um, if you look at this, like this really um, strong brow and this eye right here is actually facing right towards us, but she still appears to be gazing off. And so I was trying to capture that with my charcoal. And then I put a little touch of white so I can see that um, like in the corner of her eye. Then I'm gonna bring in just a little touch of pink and some burnt sienna. And then there's a little up really high. I really like this that's up high. This is probably water, watercolor maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna take my pastel and I'm just gonna add water to the pastel. And let's see. Yeah, just a little touch on her mouth here. I like that. Okay. And the other thing that I love are these kind of searching lines or he, there's like these little squiggles in here. And then there's this line here, which might be like her, the side of her um, hip. Okay, so I think that kind of does it. I like it. My little study. 
Okay, I got her hair kind of going out pretty far, a little further than he did. Okay. And maybe I'll just add my own touch to a little spray. Which didn't really do much. Okay. So there we have it. That's my little study in this beautiful journal. And I'm thinking that it would be really pretty to kind of go through and do a few more um, studies like this with some ink and watercolor. This little pencil here, I can maybe. I like how he did the, her mouth. See, I can keep going and going, sorry. Oh, I'll turn it around, <laughs> but I just, oh, I wanna do some more. Okay, very, I had to capture that. I could probably keep playing with this for a long time. Okay, all right. So that is my little demo in this beautiful <clears throat> handmade journal. And I put the, um, website in my newsletter. I also have put it um, the uh, at Nomad. I think it's at Nomad um, Crafts. Nomad Crafts Co. And on Instagram, but I'll put that in the um, link as well.